Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today we're going to answer the question, should I vaccinate my child? The Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine has recently been given emergency use authorization for children ages 12 to 15, and the prediction is that we will see authorization for children older than two to receive COVID vaccines as early as September of this year. But although 30% of parents said they would get kids vaccinated right away, the rest were hesitant or had no plans to vaccinate them. How about you? If you have kids or grandkids, will you get them vaccinated? Why or why not? As a parent myself to four children that range in age from nine to 15, I totally get the hesitation to vaccinate against COVID-19, although I've never hesitated with any other vaccinations for my kids. They've all received their childhood vaccinations as recommended. But for me, part of the hesitation with the COVID-19 vaccine is the messaging that has come out of the American Association of Pediatrics and other organizations who have said things like, thousands of kids have been hospitalized and hundreds have died from COVID-19. For any of us with any knowledge of COVID in healthy kids, this likely has not been our experience at all. Any child that I know that has had COVID-19 has had a mild cold or even no symptoms at all. And while I know that there are exceptional cases out there, thankfully these seem to be very rare. And data seems to be backing up what we're all experiencing. Researchers at the Stanford University School of Medicine published an article in the journal Hospital Pediatrics and analyzed COVID-19 data from a pediatric hospital from May 2020 until February 2021. During this nine-month period, 117 patients under the age of 18 either tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 at the hospital or were hospitalized for multi-symptom inflammatory syndrome in children, or MISC, which is a delayed but potentially severe reaction to a prior mild infection with COVID-19. However, out of these 117 children, nearly 40% of the COVID cases were asymptomatic, meaning that the positive COVID test was simply an incidental finding, because as anyone knows that has gone to the hospital, everyone is tested for COVID. And in the end, 45% of these admissions were classified as being unlikely to be caused by the SARS-CoV virus. But the data that was likely reported was that 117 children were hospitalized with COVID-19, you can see how this can cause overcounting of the severity of COVID disease in children and how data really needs to specify if people are being admitted for COVID or with COVID. It really is an important distinction. Furthermore, in a recent Lancet Respiratory article published in March 2021, they compared the severity of COVID with influenza in hundreds of thousands of patients in France. Of the patients hospitalized, the proportion of pediatric patients, which was defined as younger than 18 years old, was smaller for COVID-19 than for influenza. This study found that 1,227 pediatric patients, or 1.4%, were hospitalized with COVID, while 8,942, or 19.5%, were hospitalized with influenza. Of course, as new variants continue to emerge, this may change. At some point, a certain SARS-CoV-2 strain may become just as problematic for children as we've seen in older adults. But to tell parents to vaccinate in order to protect their kids, well, I don't think this is the messaging that we should be using. For children, the likelihood of having any sort of severe disease is very small, at least at this point. So to tell parents and teens that this vaccine will save their lives is an overreach. I think the messaging should be more that this will allow their kids to return to their lives without masks, without quarantines, and without social distancing. This is the messaging that should be used. And this is what motivates me to vaccinate my children. How nice would it be to know that even if your child was exposed to COVID-19, you didn't have to test them or place them in quarantine. Furthermore, vaccination will help with herd immunity. It is clear that we will likely not reach herd immunity with adults alone because of vaccine hesitancy in adults. And also, if you have a family member that's immunocompromised or at higher risk due to age or comorbidities like I do, even with them being fully vaccinated, there is a small risk that they can still contract COVID 
or that they haven't mounted a fully protective immune response after the vaccine. So by vaccinating everyone around them, they are protected even more. This is herd immunity, protecting those around you by being vaccinated yourself. Furthermore, I agree with the sentiment that mass vaccinations won't work as well for children. Parents want their own trusted pediatrician during vaccinations. This is the way that it's been typically been done. And when you're asking parents to do something that they're insecure about, it's best to let them do it in an environment that they feel safe and protected. Many parents have expressed fears of allergic reactions to the shots in their children. So having a trusted pediatrician nearby will be reassuring. To those that are concerned about the long-term consequences of the vaccine, I want to validate those concerns, but also help you realize that we don't know the long-term consequences of COVID-19 either. So it really isn't a neutral decision to decline the vaccination. Long haul COVID is a tremendously debilitating condition that has been known to occur in children as well. My one caveat and hesitation to being totally on board with vaccinating children is seeing other less affluent countries around the world suffer tremendously while they wait for vaccine supplies. Since we're starting to see a slowdown in eligible adults wanting to get vaccinations, it would be nice to see the vaccines that we're not using sent to our friends and neighbors around the world. Why? Well, first of all, because it's the humane thing to do. And secondly, by controlling outbreaks in these other countries, we lessen the chance for variants to develop, which can potentially negatively affect us all. But in the end, I decided to move forward with vaccinations for my 13 year old and my 15 year old. My son received his first Pfizer vaccine at Randall's pharmacy today without any problems. My 15 year old daughter is scheduled for hers next week. I hope that all adults and children 12 years and older will get the COVID-19 vaccine. Thanks for joining me.